Scientists are warning with shock that we are still at risk of asteroid impact. This is by Sean Martin on Express UK. The asteroids still pose a risk to Earth, and scientists admit they still find it difficult to detect them, which means that this leaves our planet vulnerable to a huge collision, a huge impact. There's a few problems, first of all. Number one, there's a lot of these space celestial bodies coming from behind the sun, and they can't see them because of the sunlight. They can't view them properly. Uh, that's one problem. Another problem is that the artificial intelligence programs that they have viewing the images that they've taken of space, and they have not covered all of space, but whatever they have covered, the AI does not detect the celestial bodies properly. It can't pick them up. And that's why they're using uh, all types of platforms to ask for amateur astronomers to help out how, however they can by viewing these images on their own time as volunteers. And uh, the few amateur astronomers that have done that have already found near-Earth asteroids that would not have been found if they had not helped. And it's obviously they have a, a, a limit on restricted budgets how many people they can hire to do all this. And also, they've been uh, directed to look for large bodies over four or 500 meters across. And not even that, I think it was, uh, yeah, 460, 460 meters across. Whereas the Apophis asteroid that's coming at us in 10 years is just under 400 meters. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of uh, other smaller bodies, smaller than 400 meters, 450 meters, that can do great damage to Earth. Now, while asteroids impacts on the scale of the one that struck about 66 million years ago at the uh, Yucatan Peninsula, which is thought to have put an end to the dinosaurs, are rare, they say, they're still possible. And experts are warning about this. And even ones on a much smaller scale still have a potential to cause great catastrophe on our planet. Scientists often point to two relatively recent incidents proving that Earth is still vulnerable to asteroid impacts. And these two incidents, of course, were not, not even seen coming in. It was the 1908 small asteroid which exploded over Siberia's Tunguska region. That's what ruined the woodlands across 800 miles. And also we have the recent one in 2013 in February, a 20 meter asteroid me meteor that exploded over Chelyabinsk, Russia, smashing windows, causing injuries to over a thousand people and uh, damages to over 7,000 buildings. Experts did not anticipate either of these and it le leads to fears that Earth could be uh, Impact, impacted by a surprise visit by one of these celestial bodies. John Horner, professor of astrophysics at University of Southern Queensland in uh, Australia. Australia, as we know, has been hit, well, they have over 50 huge asteroid craters. Uh, he says that there is still a huge risk we could be destroyed by asteroids. And we're talking about... Uh, unimaginable damage. Uh, this is also a prophecy, you know. I'm not a fear monger. I'm not a fear monger, but it's better to be safe than sorry. It's better for these scientists to come up with some kind of an international uh, organization where they uh, are able to uh, successfully uh, deflect or put an end to an in incoming body. This is a priority, obviously. Uh, it's also a prophecy. And uh, if you read Revelations 8.8 8 concerning the mountain that will be uh, uh, thrown into the sea, and also the uh, rock that will be thrown, uh, that will be uh, inbound to earth coming from the skies. 
So it looks like two, two separate events there. One, a, a mountain into the sea could be, for example, a, a volcano. Uh, another one coming from the skies, obviously, a celestial body. So um, the professor, Professor Horner says, the solar system is littered with material left over from the formation of the planets. Most of it is locked up in stable reservoirs, the asteroid belt, the Edgeward Kuiper belt, and the Oort cloud far from Earth. Those reservoirs continually leak objects into interplanetary space, injecting fresh debris into orbits across those of the planets. And he goes on to say the inner solar system is awash with debris, ranging from tiny flecks of dust to comets and asteroids many kilometers in diameter. The vast majority of the debris that collides with Earth is utterly harmless, but our planet still bears the scars of the collisions that had much larger bodies. He says we're still trying to work out how often events like this happen. Our information on the frequency of the larger impacts is pretty limited, so estimates can vary dramatically. And he goes on to describe, to say, typically people argue that Tunguska-sized impacts happen every few hundred years, but that's just based on a sample of one event. The truth is we don't really know how often this happens. While the catalog of potentially hazardous objects continues to grow, many still remain undetected, waiting to catch us by surprise. Now, Professor Horner says that all hope is not lost and scientists are working on ways to protect our planet. One of the most popular theories is the redirection of the potential hazardous asteroids that are on a collision course with Earth. Well, how are you going to do that? That takes so much money. Perhaps if we put, take money from the defense budgets and put it into planetary defense, that would be something that uh, would be, uh, of course, more successful and useful. Uh, and for the time being, they have landed on a, on a, on a comet. They have landed on, uh, they're landing on asteroids. Uh, I think the US, the US is going, the Japan, Japan is already heading. Uh, there are various countries that are trying to do various phases of asteroid missions. I guess they've sort of cut the, the phases of it to, uh, each one has its own thing to do. Um, but we're really, really behind. And let's remember what happened in the past when uh, people uh, knew of a recurring body coming every few thousand years towards Earth. We're talking about Planet X, Nibiru, Nemesis, Wormwood, our binary star, or uh, Goblin, or whatever you want to call it, Planet Nine. Uh, they had uh, knowledge of this. And I guess that's why they had a very, even the, uh, the ancient Greeks that had the Antikythera device, which was a, a device that counted the constellations and the movement of the constellations. Why would they need something like that unless they were uh, very carefully timing the uh, passes of passage of Earth through the skies because they were awaiting for an event to happen? having to do with celestial bodies. A passage of uh, a planet nine, planet X, Nibiru, Nemesis type of a thing. Um, and that, remember that the Hopi Indians and many other civilizations had underground dwellings with uh, water storage and uh, circulation of air so they could have proper fresh air, you know, and uh, these were like 20, if you would talk about the Cappadocia area uh, of the uh, underground dwellings in cities, which were like something like what Darien Kuyu were talking about, 20, 20 floors uh, deep. And some of them were able to house 200,000 uh, inhabitants. Why would they go into all that trouble of making all these underground dwellings if they didn't know that well, every once in a while you had something coming in that you would have to take refuge in uh, something that would be able to protect you. And again, this is another prophecy. 
that people, when they see all this happening, will take to uh, the caves and the rocks, the openings in the, in the rocks and the mountains, in order to protect themselves and say, please cover me and protect me. So, yeah, it sounds like it's a possibility. You know, we have to listen to the prophecies of the saints and the words of our own Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he said. Now, Professor Horner says, while we need to keep searching for threatening objects, there is another way we could protect ourselves. We're not quite there yet, but for the first time in history, we have the potential to truly control our own destiny. The article here does not say what other way we could protect ourselves. Obviously, we're talking about uh, any options that we have, either, either laser options or nuclear options, that remains to be seen. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.